reason why I wake up in the wee hours of the night to worship this God. I can't do it because I have a title. That means nothing. My title means nothing. That's why I don't even use titles. I just use titles for when in, in the academic world we use our titles. But in the house of God, I'm not a, I don't use titles. Do you see that? I don't call myself a doctor in church. Because I, yes, I've got a doctor, I've got a PhD, but I don't need those titles. In God's house, I'm a servant. I come here because I come because my God is real to me. Amen. Everyone needs a reason why you wake up in the morning. Even Caesar needs a reason to come here and worship. He doesn't Amen. worship just because he has a title as a worship leader or associate pastor. He comes here because he loves God. Amen. And that's what provokes worship, isn't that so? Yeah. Where's Paul? Paul sits on the drums there, not because he, he has to, because he got a revelation. Isn't that so? Yeah. Everyone yeah. must have a revelation. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to just share something today. If we can just sort that out, guys, please. It's going to disturb me. Um, I read a post on social media. I know social media is bad, but you do get some good stuff out of it. I want to read it to you quickly. You can put it up or there's a bit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The greatest man in history had no servant, yet they called him master. Had no degree, yet they called him teacher. Had no medicine, yet they called him healer. He had no army, yet kings feared him. He won the military battles. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He, he was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. His name is Jesus. Amen. I was just touched by the Lord, and I, uh, I just wanted to share with you, John. Uh, this is the God we serve. He's not about titles. He's not about uh, what a man sees of him, but he carries a destiny. And so I want to speak to you this morning of that same God that has his destiny inside of him. The world did not see his destiny. The world saw him as a fool, coming and speaking things that the world could not understand. But he carried the destiny of God. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you this morning, I want to speak on something that God put on my heart uh, for every person here this morning. Um, maybe last week I gave out a hard message, and this week I just want to soften your love a bit. <laughs> no, it's God wants to go. Uh, I want to speak to you on walking in the purpose and the destiny of heaven. Amen. I want you to know before I continue that there is no mistakes. God does not make mistakes. He's not in a mistake business. He can't make a mistake. The world sees you as a mistake, but God sees destiny. Each and every one of us sitting here. It does not matter where you were born. It does not matter how much of money you got. It does not matter what your family bloodline all about. It is all written in your DNA. It is in your DNA. And that's what the Bible says. We all have a purpose and we all have a function in God. And this is why I wanted each person to get a revelation of what they serve this God for. Because when you when you when you realize this God, when you when you acknowledge who He is and you know why you serve Him, that tells me a, per a person that has found a purpose in life. I want to tell you something. Finding your purpose, your God-given purpose, is not about preaching in the pulpit. All of us can be all of us can't be doctors. All of us can't be politicians. All of us can't be leaders. But each and every one of us have a, for, a purpose and a function in this world. Hallelujah. Now tell you about a man called Paul. Paul, he fulfilled the function of God, yet he still worked. Paul was a tent maker. He was a tent maker. Yet, he wrote three quarters of the New Testament. So what I'm saying is, you don't need to walk in the purpose that God has for you and sit at home. You can do what God wants. Go work. You gotta fulfill your, your purpose as a man, as a woman in your house. Go, go, go put food on your table. But in doing that, find the purpose of God. Some of us are called to full-time purpose. Some of us are not. Paul was a tent maker. Yet he wrote three quarters of the New Testament. He fulfilled his purpose. Sometimes we think that we can't do it. I'm too busy at work. I'm too busy being the CEO of the company. 
I can't fulfill my God-given purpose. That's my purpose. Yes, maybe it be your purpose. But there is a spiritual purpose that God has given you. Maybe God just called you to be someone at work. To talk to. Just go and speak the word of God to someone. That's your purpose. Is to be a light in the corporate world. When I got into business, God said your purpose in business. I have a purpose in the ministry, but I have a purpose in business as well. It's to show in the business world that we don't need to be crooks to prosper. We don't need to cheat people to prosper. It is my God-given purpose. I can be honest as every as as as, uh, as clear as ever and still get everything that the dishonest man thinks that he needs to be dishonest to get. So we all have a purpose, we all have a plan. Jesus was a carpenter. His father was a carpenter. I want to tell you, Jesus' father didn't leave him alone. He didn't allow him just to go read his Bible the whole day. I want to let you know that. If I've got, if I've got a business and that's the bread winning business of our family, my children are going to be partakers of it. They're going to give their fair share in it. I'm not just going to leave them. So Jesus' father did not just leave him to read his Bible the whole day or go pray the whole day. He taught him how to make a table. He showed him how to nail a nail into a wood, correct? But in also doing that, Jesus also found his purpose in life. So finding your purpose, your God-given purpose, does not mean you have to leave life to fall apart. You continue doing what you need. You're a businessman, continue be a businessman. If you're an accountant, continue be an accountant. But in doing it, find the purpose of life. Being an accountant is not the purpose. The only reason you are working is because you need money. It is not your purpose. You were not born to work. You were not born for money. You were born for a purpose. You get it what I'm saying? We wake up in the morning and go to work not because it's our purpose. Because if it is your purpose, you can do it for free. Who wants to work for free? Please, I need some employees next year. Who's got their purpose to work for me? Who's, who's born just to work? Please come and speak to me. I will employ you and I'll pay you nothing. And tell me how much of that purpose you'll enjoy. You work because you have to work. It is not your purpose. It is not what you're born to do. God did not uh, birth you on the earth for you to work by the toil of your brow. That was the curse of Adam. And the blood of Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of Adam. We do it because we need to do it. We need money. So you can never find your joy in that. You can never find the joy of life in doing something that's a necessity. You can only find the joy of life in doing something that is your purpose. It's like what I'm doing right now. Can you see me all check? Can you ever find Pastor Raquel all sad at the pulpit? Never! I'm excited. You have, to, you have to hold me down? Maybe sometimes I think we must put a chain here and we must chain me up to just keep me around the pulpit because I get excited because this is what I'm born to do. It is my purpose. It is my destiny. I don't do it for money. I do it for the glory of God. It is my purpose. And each and every one of us, we need to find that purpose inside of us. Not your job. Come on, we live a whole life thinking that's my purpose. And that's why you don't have no joy. Because you're trying to find joy in something that is a headache. It is a headache to go to work. Don't you lie to me. No one is happy to go to work. Yes, you may start off young. Young people, maybe like, like Renee and all of these young people starting in their, their, their careers. Oh, I want to be the best lawyer. I want to be the best doctor. After that, it's all about the money. Come on, let's be honest. It's all about money. It's all about your need. Otherwise, when you get a child, the career is no more so important, isn't it? You would rather be at home. I remember Pastor Rishin when she, when we had the Michaela, she was already tapping at me. Oh, I, I want to share the joy of my child. By the time Daniela came, she resigned. It changes everything. Because why? It is not your purpose. Your purpose is to be a mother. Your purpose is to bring forth a generation. So when her purpose was standing before her, the thing that she thought was her purpose no longer had power over her. And now, your job is, is becoming your purpose. And you, you must pray a meeting, you must pray in the morning. You come late to church. You, I'm not saying all that other people down the road because they've been their purpose. 
They, they don't read the Bible anymore because they fulfilling their purpose in life. It's a lie from the enemy. It's robbing you of your true purpose. And when you find it, joy comes. When you look for your purpose, when you look for what God has called you, yes, you're going to go work and you're going to make money. You need money to make you a little happy. But I'm talking about joy now. I'm not talking about happiness. I'm talking about joy. There is a joy where you don't need money. There is a joy where you don't need to drive a Mercedes Benz and be the most fulfilled person in the world. This is what I'm talking about. That can only be achieved when you're walking in the purpose God has called you to walk in. You can be happy with money. Our businesses bring us money to make us happy. But that happiness is subject. But my business can be a destiny, a God-given purpose, where it's not about money. I'm not in business for money. But my, my father was speaking to us the other day and we were planning you know, how we're going to take the ministry and everything into the new generation. And we're just saying it's not about money. It's not about, uh, we're not in business, we're not in ministry for money, we're in it for the purpose of God. Amen. And this is what brings fulfillment into our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you getting enough to go around and around the mountain here? Are you getting the revelation this morning? We've got to find who we are. This is what the book of Psalms says. Psalms 139, from verse 13. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was hidden from you when I was made in the secret, in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance yet being unformed and in your book they were all written the day's fashion for me. When as yet there were none of them. I want you to get a revelation here. You see, God has already destined what you would have in this world. As you start to grow up and you start to mature as a human being, needs come along the way. And we start to align ourselves to meet those needs. And that's where our jobs come in. That was not written in the in the Lamb's book of life. That was not written in your DNA in in heaven, those are things that we found along the way. Certain people are called for a certain specific purpose of heaven, like Joseph, but not everyone. There was a Joseph that was raised up in business to be a blessing to the kingdom of God, not for himself. But there were also other businessmen there that were just doing it as a job, isn't it so? Remember that. Your destiny as a child of God was written before you were formed in your mother's womb. You need to find that purpose. You need to, to search God. You need to, this is why I always push you to read your Bible, to pray, to, to uh, seek the word of God. It is not for you to become holy and come and preach. It is for you to find your destiny. Amen. If it was the God of heaven that wrote your destiny, you will find it from Him. Amen. So your life as a Christian, coming to church every morning and on a Sunday, and we praise the Lord if you can come every morning, life will be good. But it is, as you come to church, as you walk this life and learn the things of heaven, it is a journey not to be prosperous. Come on, Jesus didn't die for perishable things. Paul, Peter said something powerful. Peter said, I'm not redeemed by perishable things like silver and gold, but I'm redeemed through the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on, we don't live our entire life looking just for those things. It is a journey. My brothers and sisters, your Christian life is a journey. And that journey has a destination for you to find your purpose. Amen. Some people find it quickly. Some people find it at the end of their life. But when you find it, you find the peace and the joy of God. It fulfills you. And this is your purpose when you pray, when you seek God. Not because it's a good thing. Not because you want to feel holy. Because you want the anointing to come and drop you down. There is a deeper 
dimension of why we serve this God Amen. is to know Him and the power of His resurrection. Amen. What He died for, that's what the scriptures say. To know the power of His resurrection is to know why He died. He never died just for you to have a business, just for you to live in a fancy place, which is all good and all for those things. But He also died that you may see what you were born for. To live in your destiny that he called you to walk. There are giants sitting here that God can ignite your destiny in a day. Amen. Some of us need to walk apart with God. Look at me. I, I learned this trick because as a young man, God gave us a lot of things. When we got saved, God blessed us. We were young, we were in our early 20s and God gave us a lot of things. Businesses, cars, houses, I've tasted all of that. But I want to tell you something. I never felt fulfilled. And there came a time when God said, now go and do what I called you to do. But in order for me to live in my purpose, he had to take away the distractions from me. And he took away my houses and he took away my cars for a purpose, for me to see why I am living on the earth. That's why now money means nothing to me. I don't live for the riches of this world. Some, sometimes you'll hear me preaching. I'm different from other preachers. I don't, I don't preach that you need to wear a Rolex watch to be anointed. I can be anointed in a shop pants. I can have all my bank and have 10 digits in it. But I'll come and I'll be the same simple man I've always been. Because I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it for a purpose. I found my purpose in life. And when a man and a woman lives for their purpose, the joy of this world shall be your portion. The goodness of God shall be known in the land of the living. When I found that I was called to preach the gospel, oh my God, then I found my purpose. That's why I scream. That's why I get excited. Do you see a man that is standing before you? Do you see a fulfilled man or a man that is walking half your destiny? I am fulfilled. Everything I need is right now. The presence of God, the mighty power of His Holy Spirit flowing through me and bringing the revelations of heaven to the earth is all I need is what I was born to be. It fulfills me. Yes, I have a business that is a blessing to me. Yes, we have jobs that give us money. But they will never make me feel the way I feel right now. Never. You need to find that thing that God called you to be. You will continue being a tent maker, a carpenter, but love your destiny. Love your destiny. You know John G. Lake, one of the greatest healing revivalists that came to this land way back. We needed some John G. Lakes. He was my motivation during the coronavirus. That's why we were having the illegal church you know, during the coronavirus. Because I read the story about John G. Lake. And the Bible says when the black the swine flu or black flu hit South Africa in the early 1900s, people were dying like flies. They were afraid to go and take the dead. But a man of God raised up called John G. Lake. And he said, no, we carry the power of heaven. This is my destiny and this is my purpose on here. Let me go. And he used to go and bring the dead. Because it was such a contagious virus. And when I read about John G. Lake and how he lived in his purpose and his destiny, this is what motivated me to do what I did and lead John through Amen. the time that we were gone through. Amen. When a man finds his purpose and his destiny, the storms of this world will have no power over him. Amen. Do you understand it? And, and, and John G. Lake, if you read his history, he was a businessman. He was a very wealthy businessman. An extremely wealthy businessman in America. He was a banker at the end. And he said something powerful. I was reading the story of John G. Lake. And he said that when he was in, in the corporate world, he was so busy that he didn't have time to pray. He learned how to pray through his meetings. He learned how to pray in the spirit. So he continued doing what God called him to do at that season. But he fulfilled his destiny. And it, and it set him up for a time when a nation needed a savior and he was God's answer. Mm -hmm. So you can live your whole life working 
and neglecting your God-given destiny. And when it's your time of visitation, when God wants to raise you up, you will not be ready. Because you will, you will not identify what God called you to do. Hallelujah. God can use you in your workplace. God can use you in your business. God can use you to change people. It's like in our school. God uses us to change the lives of these children. Yes, many parents probably don't like me because I'm the, I'm the one that keeps everything in place. No one will like me, I accept that. But there were children that came to our school that the psychologist said they can never have grade one. You remember that child who said he, he, They said that the psychologist said he can never be in a normal school. He spent two years in the school and he passed. Why? We had a, we had a business. But we fulfilled our purpose in that business. Your job must become the vessel that does God's purpose. Your business especially, because you've got control over it, must become a vessel through which the purpose of God can be fulfilled. Find it. There must be a way. And you will have joy that this world cannot steal from you. I want to go, I want to go through some scriptures quickly so that you will know what I'm talking about. If you go to the book of Proverbs, Book of Proverbs chapter 19. I'm talking about your destiny. I'm talking about walking in your purpose. Not in these things of jobs. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs chapter 19. From verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel or the ways of the Lord that will prevail and stand. So you have plans of doing things in the world, which is good because you need to provide for what you have, for your need. But in doing that, all the plans that we have in our heart, we must align it to the will of God. Because the Bible says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the ways of the Lord that will prevail. So what it's saying is, yes, you can do what you think is a good thing, but when you find the purpose of God, it shall prevail in your life. You have to search God for his destiny. Amen. Amen. Verse 20, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 20, verse 5, Proverbs, the next chapter. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. So what I'm saying is, if you are willing to take the time to see God and to draw out his plan for your life, you will eat thereof. But if you are a lazy person that doesn't care and just want to live life and just exist, what is your purpose? I, want, I, I know I'm getting on, on the dangerous ground here this morning, but I want to tell you, you were not born just to be a professional in the world. The God of heaven did not die on the cross of Calvary. He did not leave heaven and come and die on the earth just so that you become a CEO of a company and die. Unless that company is used for his glory, that's when you own it. But if you're working for someone, you've got no authority over it. You can't direct that company. You can't go to work in the morning and say, oh, you know what, today I feel we're going to play this song all day because it's a song of the Lord. They'll fire you. But I can walk into, my, into the office on a Monday morning and say, um, you know what, guys, I believe this week we're only going to play this song the whole week. Okay. And it will be done. So it's used for the purpose of God. You understand? I want you to understand this. I'm not saying leave your jobs. Clear as ever, online. I'm not telling no one to leave your jobs. But I'm saying while you're doing your job, pursue the plan and the purpose of heaven. There is a plan that God has. God can use you. I want to tell you when, when Joseph was in the prison, there was a purpose for him being. One of the purpose was to set the platform for him to get his promotion before Pharaoh. And the second one, he was a blessing to the cupbearer and the baker. There's a ministry in everywhere we are. God can use you. Be the light unto the Lord. I want to rush through it because I, I took too much time in the beginning. I want to get through, uh, you know, sometimes in our life, the book of Romans. What does the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 20? Uh, let, let's go to the book of Romans. Chapter 
verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. So it tells me that all things will work together for our good. We like that scripture, isn't it? All things will work together for my good because I love Christ. And we stop there. What does it go on to say? And I call according to my purpose. So what it's telling me that we can be, we can pursue the things of this world without the purposes of God. But not all things are going to work for our good. That means when the economy is going through some time, you're going to suffer. You're going to lose your job. You're going to go through some retrenchment. You can't hold God accountable if you are not living in your purpose. Only when you are living in your purpose, you can hold God accountable for your business and your job. I don't think that. All things work together for those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. Not just loving God. There must also be a pursuing of your purpose. That's where the true blessing is. You see what I'm trying to say this morning is you can look at an entire Christian life just loving God and God will bless you. But you will still go through the valley experiences. You will still go through the ups and downs of life. But there is a life of joy and peace. And that is only when you are walking in the purpose that God has called you to walk in. And each, as I started the service, there is no one sitting here that does not have a purpose of God. We must find that purpose. God don't make mistakes, my brothers and sisters. God is not in a mistake business. As I always told you, my English teacher thought I was a mistake. Most of the teachers, my African teacher would walk in the class and say, Rakesh, you get out of the class. You're not welcome in this class. They saw a mistake, but God saw his preacher. God saw someone that would run to the ends of the earth for him. God don't make mistakes. God don't make mistakes. We make the mistakes. I want to tell you something. Let me give you an example. If you look in the book of Genesis chapter 1, when God created the world, the Bible says God created the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything that we see, the trees. God created the oceans. And they had, each one had a purpose and a function. He created the stars. The Bible goes in the book of Genesis chapter 1. He says, let us, let there be light, let us create the stars so that there will be day and night. And day and night, isn't that so? Does it stop in day and night? Have you walked outside at 10 o'clock in the night unless you're in the Antarctica or something? It's still nighttime, isn't it? So, so what God created is still working from the Garden of Eden. I don't know about you, but trees are still growing and trees are still producing what they're supposed to produce. When you put a seed of mealy in the ground, it still grows and produces millies. It doesn't produce thorns. So it tells me that this God is a perfectionist. It tells me what he made stands the test of time. He made the ocean in the book of Genesis and he said, let us make the ocean so that it can, it can team with, with fish and, and all living creatures. The ocean still has fishes. It still has the ability to keep the fish and the whales and the sharks. So it tells me that God's creation is still fulfilling its purpose. It tells me of a God that doesn't make mistakes. When he speaks a word, it is done. Amen. When he spoke a word on the sky, he said, you will stay there and you will know, you will create day and night for my people. It's still doing what God commanded. When he commanded the sea to hold the fish and all the living creatures, the sea is still holding it. It cannot let it go because God is not a God that makes mistakes. Amen. When he created the ocean, he never made one pothole somewhere that it all leaks out into space. And our ocean drives up. When he made ground, he said, now you will produce a substance and the minerals that will grow the plants. Do we still need ground to grow? Yes. God is not in the mistake business. And if he made all these things that I and seem irrelevant up in the sky, those twinkle, twinkle little stars, it seems irrelevant, but it has the greatest function. And it's still fulfilling the call of God. And so sometimes the world look at us like that twinkle, twinkle little star up in the world that has no function. But we will still fulfill the plan of God. God don't make mistakes. 
As he made everything in the beginning, they are still doing what he commanded them to do. And so God said that you are born for a purpose. And then he came, after he created everything, he came to the world, uh, to the, uh, to, uh, to create man. Wait a minute, before I go there. I'm talking about the God of perfection. The God that doesn't make mistakes. When he, when he anointed the ark that Noah built, for the purpose that he called it to be, that ark fulfilled his purpose, did it sink? Yeah. It never sinked. But I want to tell you something. If Noah decided not to take only two pairs of, uh, a pair of everything, and he decided, okay, let me take some unrighteous friends of mine. I like that brother, he gives give me a laughing. Let me take him, give me company during this uh, flood. That ark was going to sink. If he decided to take people that God never told him to put in an ark, it was going to sink because it was not built for that purpose. It was only built for a specific purpose. And when that purpose is being done, the anointing of God sustains it. So you were built for a purpose. And when you are not doing that purpose, the anointing of God cannot sustain you because you are walking contrary to what he called you to walk. We can't hold God, we can't hold him accountable for something he never called us to do. If God called me to be a preacher, and if I just wanted to go and work in the world, I can't hold God accountable for anything that is happening in my life because he called me to be a preacher, I must be a preacher. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what made Noah's ark sustained. As I told you, the Bible says Noah built the ark for 100 years, but at the end of the whole story, the Bible says that God shut the ark. You need God to seal your life. And He will only seal it when you find your purpose. Before that, you will walk in your own strength. Yes, you will find the grace of God here and there. You will find you walk in a miracle here and there. And then you will go down and you will go round and around the mountain again until you find your destiny. You see, the people of Israel, they wanted to camp in the desert, but their purpose was Canaan. As long as they stayed in the desert, they were, for, they were facing the storms of the desert. You know, oh, Shaka, Brondo. You, used, you remember, in the desert, they didn't have water. In the desert, they never, they had water for a while, then the water ran out. They had food for a while, then, the, then he had to call the birds with the meat. Then the manna had to come. But you ever heard them saying in Canaan, Oh, look, God, we don't have food to eat, nothing. Because when you're walking in your purpose, the provisions of God are there continuously. This is where I want to get you. To taste the goodness of God in this world continuously. Not one day be blessed. Next year you break through storms. Next year you break through storms again. When you're walking in your destiny, and it is a lifelong journey to fulfill the destiny and the plan of God, then your life is covered with the anointing of God. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning? We walk in, we're talking about our God-given destiny. Amen. Now look at it. Let's jump back to the Garden of Eden now. We're talking about a God of perfection that everything he made worked. And then after he made all of if those things are still working to today, in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, he says, now let us make man. So you think the, and you know what he said something there. Let us make man in our own likeness, in our own image, so that he will have dominion over all things. And he will be blessed and he'll be fruitful. Now God made the star. The star is still producing what it was made for. God made the tree. It is still fulfilling its purpose. Now when he made man, that was his mistake. Does that sound like that God we're talking about? Whatever, if the stars are still, as oh my God. What I'm trying to tell you this morning, if you see the star in the sky every night, if you still see the moon giving light to the earth, that means your destiny is still valid. That's what I'm telling you. Every time you see the sea and it still holds the fish, you are still called to be fruitful and you are still called to have dominion over the earth. Because the same God that called the sea is the same God that blessed you. In your destiny. Y'all, you must have heard. 
when I was when I was saying that I picture, Hallelujah, someone jump up and say, Yes, I'm blessed. Yes, I speak to my storm and I say, God is faithful. Yes, I speak to my inability to do things and I say, God, I'm going to make it done because He said I will be fruitful. Woman that are trying to have children, I expected you all to jump up and get a revelation and say, God gave me a purpose. Are you listening to what I'm saying this morning? God called you for a purpose and your purpose as a woman is to bring forth children. God said in Genesis 1.26 that you will be fruitful and multiply. And God that made the star is the God that made you. God said he'll give you dominion over everything. What storm can stand against the man and the woman that is walking in your destiny? He said so. If the sea still has fish, if the tree still bears fruit, if the moon is still where it's supposed to be, if we still have high and low tide of the ocean, that means you are still born to be a blessing. You are still born to be fruitful. You are still born to have destiny and to have a dominion over all things. That's who we are born to be. But we must find the purpose of God. Now I, wanna, now I get the, to the hard part of being the pastor. There must be a caution, isn't it? It's all, and it can't always be sweet. Now, oh Jesus, look at this. I love the gift of revelation. Everyone says that the Genesis 126 is the destiny. When God said, listen to this. God said, let us make man our own image according to our likeness. Let him do, let him have dominion over all the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and every, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. I want to tell you something. That was not the true blessing. That was not the destiny of Adam. That was not his purpose. God did not just make Adam just for that. Adam had a purpose. And that purpose was revealed a few verses later. Let me take you on a journey. Shake your theology as well. And in uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. That was his purpose. Are you getting what I'm saying? No hallelujahs, no under revelation. No, that's fleshly. <laughs> Genesis 1, 26 to 28 is the characteristics of someone that is walking in their purpose. It is not just your purpose. It just doesn't come to you. So God told, let us do this. When God did that, he was talking to man. He was talking to the Trinity. Read the Bible, Genesis 1, 26. It says, let us make man. So there's a conversation between the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they were discussing something. Let us create this man. Man was not even created. So how can we hold him to that destiny? It was not his destiny. It was the characteristics. And God said, let us create him. And then we will do this and do that. And then he walked with the Adam in the garden. Having communion with Adam. And then in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, then he says, now I want to tell you what I've bought, what I've made you for. I made you so that you can come and tell what I've created on the earth. The Garden of Eden was a replica of the world God wanted to create on the earth. And God told Adam, this was your purpose, my son, that you needed to tend and keep this garden. And if you will be faithful to tend and keep this garden, then you shall be fruitful. And then you shall have dominion of all the earth. But the day you do not fulfill, oh, you're getting a revelation here. And the day you do not fulfill your purpose, you will walk by the sweat of your brow. And when they sinned, and when God took him out of that garden, in another world, he took them out of their purpose. Adam was no longer fulfilling his purpose. 
Therefore, he could not have claimed to Genesis 126. Are you getting me? That blessing was subject to him being in the garden and doing what God called him to do. The day he decided to leave the garden because of sin is the day he could not hold God any longer for the characteristics of the purpose of God because he was no longer walking in the purpose of God. And many of us are walking not in the purpose of God, the God-given purpose, not our job. Yet we're holding God accountable to the blessing and the characteristics of our purpose. Only when you do what God called you to do, can you quote by Genesis 1.26. Harder, but it's a truth. And this is why we say God listens to some people and He don't listen to other people. No, He's listening to those that are walking in their purpose. Amen. And to walk in your purpose means that you have to do things that your flesh don't want you to do. And it carries the blessing. Now listen to this and I close. Jesus. God told him to tend the garden. How did the enemy deceive Adam and Eve? He came to them and said, Are you sure God told you to do that? Are you sure that that's your purpose? That's what he was telling them. Are you sure? He created you just to be a gardener? Are you sure? No, I think you must see this thing, eh, Eve? I think God is a trickster. He don't want you to eat of the fruit. Because when you eat of the fruit, you will become like him. The caution, my brothers and sisters, is to find your purpose. Not your brother's purpose. Adam was never created to be God. There was no need to create another God. There was a God. God needed someone that would look over his creation. The enemy came and took the eyes of Adam and Eve of their purpose and made him see the purpose of another person, God. Sometimes we live our whole life saying that that's a good thing. I want to be like a, like school. I want to study something or do something. It seems like a good job. And I'll do well in it. But that's not my purpose. I can, I can pursue it with all my heart. And I can have the blessings of this world. I can have a degree. I can do that. I can have the job that you are pursuing. But I will never be walking in my purpose. And I will never have claim to Genesis 126. It will never be mine. And this is what we do all our life. Some young people sitting in the church. I want to be like that man of God. I want to be a woman sitting in the church. I want to be like that. I want to do this. I want to do that. Find what God called you to do. And that's how he tricked them. He put their eyes on someone else's purpose. I want to tell you something. There's only one cover. Only one handsome cover. No one else in this church can do and look like over. No one. No matter how hard they try. No one. There's only one Joshua. Joseph. Joshua. Joseph. There's only one Joseph. Only one Joseph will look as handsome as you. No one else can be you. They can try to comb their hair like you. One strand of your outer will make them look different. They can wear the same clothes. They can wear the same shoe. But they will never carry the destiny that you carry. It is yours. It has been written before you were born on the earth. And it cannot be transferred to someone else. This man carries his own destiny. He carries his own DNA that was written before you were formed in your mother's womb. And this man carries his own. You can't be compatible to him. There's only one Rakesh. And I will be the best Rakesh that I can be. Amen. I will not try to be Benny him. Yeah. I will not try to be Ring and Bonke. I am Rakesh. I am uniquely made by the hand of God. The Bible says 
in the book of Psalms 139 that I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. Yeah. Young lady, you are fearfully made in the hands of God just the way you are. Don't change for no one in school. Don't change the way you think. Don't change the way you talk. Be who God called you to be and you will walk in the destiny of God and the favor of God will come and one day when you're a young, when you're a young woman not grown up, God will bring your prince shopping to stand before you. Amen. Don't go and be someone that you are not. Siki is a good man, but let Siki be Siki. I'll be Rakesh. That was the trick in the Garden of Eden that caused him to lose their destiny. Find who God called you to be, my brother and sister, and the grace and the mercy of God shall be yours to have. You call upon this God and he shall answer you. We want all the scriptures, but we are not walking in the purpose that God has called us to walk in. And I close with this. The key to this whole thing was, First, God told him his characteristics of his blessing, Genesis 1.26. Then God walked with him. And then only did he find his purpose. God spent time with Adam. The Bible says that he called the animals and he said, Adam, name them. And God stood back and he watched to see what Adam will name them. So you can only find your destiny when you spend time with God. Amen. This is the reason of reading your Bible. This is the reason of praying, of seeking God, of fasting. It is not to get blessings. Though that's the fleshly thing that the church has been led to believe. It is to find your destiny. It is to find your purpose as a woman of God. It's like you, my sister. I see you as a, as a warrior in the spirit. You need to come join us for intercession. Because I see that anointing, that fire inside of you as a watchman of the Lord. Watchman, you let's keep your eyes on her. It's like that. And God has called you for that. Let us be who God called us to be. Let us pursue it with all that we are. Hallelujah. Amen. And God will raise you up. Find your destiny. Find your destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. You just, I, I turn to you and then I, I lost track, my trail of thought. But maybe God wants to tell me that. That we need to be all that God called us to be. Amen. Find your destiny, find your purpose. And you will be all that God, spend time with God. Read. God never called us to pray for blessings. God called us to pray for our destiny. When you are praying in the night, when you are seeking God, when you're waking up in the night and praying under the power and the glory of God, you know what God is doing? Because you found your purpose. So what God does is, while the sister is busy praying, that's her purpose. Now that doesn't mean all of us must go pray. God gave her that anointing. Yeah. While she's praying, God is sending his angel to come and touch your children, your husband. Come and put their destiny into place. Why? Because you're in your purpose. We don't pray for the blessings. When we walk in our purpose, the blessings are lying because God spoke. Just as no one needs to tell oh Jesus. No one needs to tell the star to shine. No one needs to tell the ocean to hold back. Because God spoke a word and it will obey. You don't need to tell your destiny to produce. You need to walk in it. God already spoke it. It will obey God's voice. Amen. Are you getting a revelation this morning? Amen. Let me close there because there's too much of things going on and I'll keep you here forever. God loves you. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. No matter where you are, no matter what mistakes you made, God will raise you up. You find what God called you. You seek Him with all your heart and He will reveal to you what you are called to be. Be the best father you can be, be the best uh, husband, wife, child you can be. 
and God will lead you by His word. Amen. Does that make sense to you this morning? Can we stand to our feet? Father, I bless you, Lord. And I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your presence, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the great plan and purpose that you have given your people, Lord. I thank you that they are called for great things, Lord. I thank you that nothing on the earth can change their destiny and their purpose. I ask, Lord, that you would cover them with your glory. And, Lord, that you would fill them with your fire. I just want to send out a call this morning to those that maybe there's someone here that does not know Jesus. I want you to know that you that he died for you, no matter where you are. Maybe you're in this world, going from pillar to post, not knowing exactly what God has called you. I want to tell you it all starts at the cross of Calvary. It is at the cross of Calvary that your destiny shall be made known unto you. If that's you out there, and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, even if you're online, wherever you are in the world, and if you are by some chance listening to my voice today, I want you to say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that God rose you from the dead. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And the Bible says if you have said that prayer, that you are saved. If there's anyone here, praise the Lord, everyone is uh, saved here. If there's anyone that has said that prayer, you find yourself a nice Bible-based church, and you, get, you start to grow in your destiny, and you find the purpose of God. Amen. I had many, many desires, but today I walk in what God has called me to do. And it is greater than anything my heart ever desired. When you find the purpose.